So for the past year, I've been using this note-taking app Notion, and it's completely transformed the way I work. I use it to take notes for all of my classes, to write every video script or article, and to track my internship and job applications. Basically everything work or academic related, Notion handles it. If you're new here, my name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science, and in this video, I'm gonna answer the following questions. What is Notion? Why is Notion by far the best productivity or note-taking app? And why every single math, science, or computer science student should be using Notion for literally every everything they do. Timestamps are in the description, so if you're already familiar with Notion, you can jump around. With that, let's begin. In the past, I would only use physical notebooks. Every year, I'd go to Staples and buy five to six of those physical notebooks from that brand Five Star. You probably know which ones I'm talking about. And yeah, it was nice to write out everything by hand and have a pretty dense looking notebook. However, I soon realized that there were several problems with this approach. First of all, the organization was subpar. I couldn't easily find a specific chapter because I never created a table of contents or anything like that. If I wanted to look for something, I'd have to flip through multiple physical notebooks, which wasted a lot of unnecessary time. Second, I couldn't easily reuse any notes I'd already taken. If I wanted to revisit something from the previous year and connect it to new information, I'd have to pull out two physical notebooks and transcribe everything by hand. Notion solves both these problems and many more. What is Notion? Well, Notion is an all-in-one personal knowledge management tool. People call it a note-taking app, but it's a lot more than that. Basically, anything knowledge or information related in general, Notion can handle it. That seems extremely broad, but that's the beauty of Notion. It's so adaptable, it can pretty much handle anything you throw at it. If you're a student or your job has anything to do with learning and retaining new information, you should try Notion. You won't be disappointed. So if you go to notion.so and create a new account or download the app to your computer, the first thing you'll do is create a workspace. You can name this anything. I named mine Amon's workspace. Then you'll be greeted with either an empty page or a ton of templates. At the core, Notion has three levels, blocks, pages, and databases. Everything in Notion is one of those three items and they all interact with each other. For example, let me create a blank page like this. This is a page and there's nothing inside it yet. We can give it a title like computer science notes. And then we can choose an emoji and give it a cover. One benefit of Notion is that it just looks really nice, which incentivizes you to use it more. Pages are made up of blocks. To access all the potential blocks, all I have to do is type a slash. Then I get a list of potential options. I can do a ton of different things from making a new page or choosing a heading or creating a bullet list. Blocks are the most basic level of Notion. At the fundamental level, everything is made up of blocks contained within an outer page. When you start using Notion, you can explore all the different kinds of blocks and get used to them. The second level is a page, which stores all the blocks that you use. You can also nest pages within other pages like this. This is an example of the organizational power of Notion, which I'll dive into later in this video. Finally, you can create databases which house a bunch of pages together with some other metadata. This is kind of complex, so I'm not going to go into how to use databases in this video, I'll talk about them in a future one. Basically, they allow you to store and organize a bunch of related pages, like classes, notes, or articles. So people have made free complex templates that you can just load up into your Notion. So instead of spending time to make it yourself, you can use someone else's template in your own system. This can be tempting, I mean, if you could get a custom Notion setup without having to make it yourself, why wouldn't you? However, I would advise that you exercise caution when using templates. When I first downloaded Notion, I tried using a bunch of templates, and because they were super complicated to get used to, it kind of turned me off to Notion as a whole. I had no clue how anything worked. So I'd advise, don't use any templates. Just jump in and try the most basic features like pages and blocks until you figure out how everything works. Once you watch a bunch of YouTube videos about it, you can slowly expand to the more complex features. However, if you use templates, you'll never actually understand Notion. Notion, which can be a problem. Okay, now that you have a basic understanding of what Notion is, what's so special about it, and why is it so much better than any other note-taking app? With most note-taking apps, all it is is a bunch of notebooks with pages in it. They've taken physical notebooks and made them digital. That's all. And while it's really easy to understand, this puts a limit on what you can do with it, which is a problem. However, Notion opens a world of possibilities. When you create an account, literally all you get is one blank page, and that's it. They don't provide any external structure that you have to stick to. You create everything, which means that it's extremely powerful and custom. Because of this unique customizability, Notion has incredible organization, which is great for academics. When you learn stuff in class, you're provided with a general overview and then you dive into individual topics. One problem with a notebook is that everything is linear. Basically, you dive into topic one and then you go into topic two and then topic three. It's deep information, but it's completely one after another. The problem with this is that you can easily miss the general overview. You can kind of lose the forest from the trees. If you can only see topic one in detail, it's easy to forget how 
topic one connects to topic two, which connects to topic three, and so on. Notion solves this problem by giving you multiple methods to strategically hide information. The first way it does this is by providing the ability to create pages within pages. Let's say I open up a new page for a computer science class. If there are five topics I'm learning in this class, instead of fully laying out topic one, then topic two, then topic three, I can create a page for each of them. This is the most simple technique of organization in Notion, which other note-taking apps just don't have. The second beauty of Notion is the toggle feature. This lets you hide any blocks underneath the toggle. I'm in my notes for one of my computer science classes, and as you can see, all it is is a few headings with a bunch of toggles in it. If I open one of these toggles, a lot of information comes out. If I couldn't hide this information, you just wouldn't be able to see the big picture overview of this topic. Everything would be laid out one after another, like this. This is the same document with every single toggle open. It just looks so much worse with everything splayed out one after another. But because of these toggles, you can strategically hide everything when you want to. There are two parts to learning anything, understanding and memorization. I'm gonna explain how Notion is great for both of them. First, I'll go through my lecture workflow for understanding new content in my computer science classes. Notion is great for computer science. When I watch new lectures, I'll have the lecture open on one monitor with Notion open on the other. Usually, I'll watch a few minutes of the lecture at 3 to 4x speed. Then I'll pause, lean back, and think about what I just heard. One problem that people have is that they don't realize that simply listening to a lecture isn't enough. You need to pause and make sure you really understand it in your head. Finally, I'll take that understanding I reached, create a question, and write an answer in my own words. I'm using the Feynman technique, which states that you should rephrase your notes in your own words to make sure that you understand the material. Now, this writing questions and rephrasing could be done in any note-taking app. However, there are a few reasons why this process is much better in Notion. First, as discussed before, you have the toggle feature. In other apps, you'd have to create two documents side by side to write out questions and answers. This is much more inefficient and is one reason why Notion is great for this stuff. Next, Notion is incredibly good at handling all kinds of media. Let me explain. Basically, Notion can handle almost anything you throw at it. Most note-taking apps can deal with text and images, but Notion can also take PDFs, LaTeX, and code, which is amazing. Notion has blocks for all these different kinds of media. For example, if I wanted to input a PDF into my notes, all I would have to do is type slash PDF and then upload it. Then I can access it right there. This is great for documents and textbooks. I can also write LaTeX in Notion, which is the system for all mathematical notation. All I do is type slash inline equation and then I can write any mathematical notation I want using LaTeX. Finally, Notion can handle any code. This is why Notion is by far the best app for computer science. I can create a code block, pick a language, and input code in that language. Notion will then store it and provide proper syntax highlighting. This makes writing code in your notes incredibly easy. One reason why every computer science major should be using Notion. Notice how most of my answers in the toggles contain code snippets and explanations. However, some of them do have screenshots. I usually try to avoid simply screenshotting the lecture presentation. If you do this, you don't really have to rephrase anything in your own words, which means that you can get away with not understanding it. It's also not searchable. If you search your Notion, you won't find anything that's stored in an image. Searching your notes is really useful for your classes. The beauty of typing out your code in Notion is how you can jump directly to it using search. There are times where I come across a term in my homework that I just don't remember. If I've taken notes on it, all I need to do is type command P and then I can find that term immediately and relearn it. This is incredibly efficient. Now that I've explained how understanding works in Notion, I'm gonna go through why Notion is great for memorization. As you probably know at this point, Point, simply writing out notes isn't very beneficial towards remembering the content long term. It's important to test yourself if you want to actually recall what you've learned. Notion makes this easy with, again, the toggle feature. All you have to do is, after writing your questions, run through them and quiz yourself. I usually do this a few days before the exam. I'll isolate the chapters that are being tested and run through my questions. If I get a question wrong, I'll just highlight it and change the color like this. This way, I know I should redo the specific questions right before the test. Now, your study technique should actually change based on the subject you're learning. This is because every subject is different in terms of the mental faculties that it pulls on. Everything you learn has some amount of pure abstract understanding and some level of memorization. Let's say you're memorizing the order of a deck of cards. That's pure memorization. There's not much understanding involved with that. Conversely, most of math is pure understanding. Once you get how addition works, it's not like you need to memorize it. As long as you really understand it from the ground up, you should be able to derive the solutions from your intuition. Because of this balance between understanding and memorization, you should vary your study techniques 
based on the subject that you're studying. Let's consider biology. Biology is mostly memorization with some understanding up front. If you look at a lot of biology, it's not actually that difficult to grasp when you first learn it. However, because there's just so much information, most of your energy will be put towards memorizing it for the future. This is why you should invest in writing a ton of questions and making flashcards. If you consider math and physics, there's no way you can make flashcards for those subjects. They're heavily abstract and understanding based. This means that it's very difficult to acquire deep intuition on the topic, but once you do, you should be able to apply it to solve many problems on the exam. The homework sets that these classes provide are a good way to test whether you actually get it. Based on the subject you're studying, you should alter the way that you use Notion. Luckily, as I explained before, Notion is so open-ended that it can work for almost all study techniques. Now, the only problem with Notion is that it doesn't support handwriting, which some people don't like. However, it's never been much of an issue for me. As long as you use the Feynman technique while writing notes in Notion, which means that you slow down and rephrase the content in your own words, the benefits that handwriting would provide just simply disappear. However, for some subjects like math, you might want to use a physical notebook or an app like Notability on the iPad. I don't use Notion as much for mathematics, but for every other subject, it's great. In conclusion, literally everyone should drop whatever note-taking app they're using right now and give Notion a try for a few months, especially if you're studying computer science. I promise it's worth it because most of you will gain organizational, understanding, and memorization benefits to doing so. I want to reiterate that the best way to use Notion is to try it out without using any templates. Stick to the basic features and slowly watch a bunch of YouTube videos to learn the more advanced features of Notion. I'll link some good ones in the description that you can check out. After a few weeks, you can expand to trying some more fancy or complicated features. If you're interested in learning more about some of my other favorite productivity apps on the iPad Pro, you can watch this video right here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, a like would be incredible, and I will see you in the next video.